Welcome everyone to the Smite Competitive, a new weekly show where I keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Smite Competitive scene. Now, before we start, you will see this is bro broken behind me, lighting issues, so when it's fixed, well, you know, it'll be fixed. This Friday we had Gamescom in Germany where four of the top EU teams battled it out for a prize pool of 15,000 euros. High Res changed up their format of how they do their tournaments as it's only four teams that did a round robin system and for, for, you, for those of you that don't actually know what a round robin system is it's where every team plays each other once so each team does three matches pretty much because there's only three other teams for them to go against then they're put into a ranking depending on how they do so like the best one goes into well the top two go into the, the t playoffs for the finals and then the bottom two go into the playoffs for the third place matches that's kind of how that works it's nice easy to go do. now the Smite stage, while we were there, well, while everyone was there, looked beautiful, obviously, with the new artwork up behind. It's all kind of cloth. It's nothing like printed. Well, it is printed, but it's cloth work, and it'd be lovely to actually get hold of one of them. I did want to get that. I just wanted the bitmap, actually, of that one behind the casters, obviously behind Bart and uh, James Kaplan there. And I'd, I'd actually, if I can get the, the bitmap, I'll put it up here, and it'll look really cool, and then the show would look quite good. So I'll see what I can do about that for you. It'll be kind of brilliant. Now, what we could see, obviously, with the with the stage being great, the in-game observer was a bit subpar. Now, Smite has a great multi-directional camera that gives you like a, a director's feel, like a movie director sort of thing. So, anyone that really can get a grips of it can do wondrous things with it. Now, you can kind of see that a caster that has to do the camera work as well can't do it it's too much of a workload you can kind of tell that when they're looking somewhere else or they're focusing on a fight or they're trying to have a conversation with each other trying to entertain us basically they're going to miss something they're going to miss something on the mini map they're going to miss something on the fight or they're talking and not going to move the camera we saw that quite a lot over the weekend now it was quite frustrating i was kind of yelling at the screen going but move the camera just move the camera please just move it and uh it was. It did get quite frustrating, but it's. It kind of shows that Smite needs a dedicated observer. Now we see dedicators, dedicated observers in StarCraft 2, so, uh, well, no one actually in StarCraft 2 is Funker, and everyone knows who Funker is. He does WCS. Now, Smite, we we should start seeing some dedicated observers go over there. It lets the casters do their job, not have to worry about moving a camera, kind of get on with it, and just not have to worry too much and just do their job entertaining us telling us what's going on and kind of teach us we also saw uh, the addition to the the caster team we saw mr james kaplan come over there it was a, a league of legends caster uh, obviously he's got a great bit of knowledge with mobas and stuff now his knowledge of smite was very limited and quite basic now he i know that asking questions is a great thing well not asking questions like Explaining things during the, the cast is a great thing, kind of lets new players in, uh, into a bit of insight, uh, how the game works, let's kind of new people's go, just bring new people into the game to help understand what's going on. That's great at the exhibitions and in some tournaments, and it's all great, but the amount of times that James Kevin was going, so why, but why is this happening? Why were they doing this? What about this and this? It kind of made me feel like he was like a little child going, why... What? But why are you doing that? But why? Just cause. Why? That's how it kind of made me feel. So maybe when he gets a bit more kind of a bit more knowledge of Smite, brilliant. He's fantastic. He's got obviously all the background as a caster, like a professional caster, and he has his best paid job to do. It'll be great to actually get him back on the team now. Uh, I do believe, I know Dry Bears go into PAX, so maybe we're going to actually see PAX co-casting up there, so we may have, like, obviously the, the Dry Bear addition to that, so I'd like to see who else he actually casts with, maybe Bart, but I'd like to obviously, well, yeah, maybe, we'll just see how that one goes. Now, it seems Bart made him a little uncomfortable, with all the sexual windows that was going around, kind of, the, the face he was kind of portraying was quite a funny one, he did get used to it by the end and actually started giving a few things back, so... It just, he had to get used to Bart again, and it was kind of funny to actually watch. 
it was good to see how much preparation the teams put into their event. Now, we also see Bipolar Method saying that their, their previous scrims and events that they were doing and matches where they were playing a bit passive, a bit defensive, and it was kind of messing up their game. Now, there was a few matches that I cast them there were against Exposed Secrets. It was like they were so reactive, Exposed Secrets just run over the objectives, just completely took over the matches and that. They obviously see that. They've obviously seen their weakness. They've kind of worked on that one. It's just really great to actually see him kind of mix it up. And it did lead to some questionable decisions later on. Some objectives they kind of went for where it was a bit, eh, game-throwing, possibly. But, yeah, it's kind of see how we go. Now, yeah, because mainly we play really passive. We like to, like, kind of play really safe. But we've been trying to work, trying to be more aggressive, like, the last couple of weeks because, like, when we look back on our scrims and tournament matches and stuff, we realize that we play really passive and like there's like points where we could have pressured them more but we didn't. So we practiced on that a lot and it seemed to really pay out this game. During the round robin we saw a high level of play from all the boys, but I did feel sorry for the wildcard team Vengeance Esports where they did lose all three of their matches. Now, Cognitive Gaming lost their first one against Bipolar Method, but then did come back to win their next two, and then stopping SK as well in their final match to get stopping them getting the 3-0. So it was all kind of really good there. As well as Bipolar Method and SK match was a really interesting watch. Harrock and Young Bay pulled off a great turnaround on Sayo, and just made the it was the play of the day for me. Just the way it all kind of come together and just the zoning uh, try to get them to disengage. Thor's down now. They're going to catch Young Bay, but Hunbots is there to protect him in the back line. Here comes Apollo coming in. They really want to pick up Young Bay. They know he's been doing a lot of damage in the fight. Immediate beads on reaction. Here comes Sayo. Will he be able to pick up the skill on the bay? You know he's looking for it. Where's the juke, Young Bay? You don't have a leap available. Will he go down? Oh, the Aegis is just brilliant. They're going to go with Hyrak as well. Will they turn this around on Sayo? The Desert Fury being channeled, and they pick him up. What a play by Bipolar Method. Then Gortok's going to dive as well. Sun Touch will pick up Lobster over in the side lane, but it doesn't matter. That play by Young Bay was just brilliant. What James Kaplan and a lot of viewers, especially me, kind of noticed as well, to be honest, I've kind of noticed it for a little while, but after the 35 minute mark, 35, 40 minute mark, the game starts to stall out. It starts to get a little stale, starts to quieten off, uh, players stop pushing objectives, uh, start focusing the goal fury when it's completely pointless to go for it because they'd rather focus the goal fury than actually try for a fire giant because they're too scared. Uh, we just kind of see... just. It, it maybe give high res a little bit of a, a push to maybe either maybe nerf the fire giant again, maybe reduce some spawn times to kind of give players the insight to uh, fight a bit more in the late game with a little bit less penalty because we all know if you lose two or three members in a in a ma in a team fight towards the end of the game, you're pretty much going to lose an objective. You're either going to lose a fire giant, which then is going to lose you the game, or you're going to lose a couple of towers or maybe a phoenix. Now. It's alright if you lose one, but with the high respawn timers that you get at level 20, you can lose two towers and a phoenix if you get a deer side. That's quite a lot, and I actually think that that's a little too much that can be done in such a short amount of time. So maybe we can see maybe some balance issues coming out, maybe just we'll leave it in high res's hands to maybe kind of see what they want to do about it, because after all, they're the ones that are going to do the change. The third place match between Bipolar Method and Vengeance Esports was a real slog, but a poorly timed hog from Bipolar Method allowed Vengeance Esports to get the steal and actually turn the game in their favour. Now, the final fire giant in that match was a piece of art. It was beautiful to watch, actually. Vengeance Esports had no hog at their disposal. They couldn't really seal the deal when it comes to the fire giant, but they went for it anyway. Now, Badger from Bipolar Method's come in there attempting to steal, but Ripercast on Naja actually ulted him into the air, just allowing their team just enough time to secure the fire giant when he lands. And you'll see it, he'll land, and then literally as he lands, he does the hog, but it's just like seconds too late, like a fraction of a second too late. It literally was how the game's been, and that was it. When that moment actually they secured that fire giant, the game was over. That was it, done. Done and dusted. They pushed pretty much to a victory then. And it was it was just great. And that's also where we saw Bipolar Method and Vengeance Esports. They did play the, the match. They literally played the match before as well. And they both picked the same teams. Now, Bipolar Method destroyed them in the first one because they realized Vengeance Esports had a, a carry-heavy lineup. They had Kronos, 
Hebo, uh, Naja, all very late game carries, if they can get to the late game. Now, Bipolar Method exploited that weakness in the first match that they had, uh, completely destroyed them, didn't let them get to that late game. But in the bronze match, the third place match, they couldn't shut them down early enough. And what happened is the game got to the late, the late game, and then they just got... Just they couldn't hold back the amount of damage that was coming out from Vengeance Esports. And Vengeance Esports, actually the underdogs in the tournament, come away with bronze. Brilliantly done. Full, fair play to the guys. They played really well and they deserve every penny they got. The finals between Cognitive and SK was an interesting turn of events. Game 2 went on so long. SK doing a completely failed fire giant causing an almost deicide on them. But then only to have Cognitive Gaming later on in the game do exactly the same mistake and throw the game pretty much. That mistake, just the repeat of that mistake, just completely through the game, give SK the match and cause them to go off into the third match. They could have secured that, they should have, could have won and actually moved on that way. Now, third game, we saw an interesting pick actually come from SK. A jungle Isis. Now, they did switch over, it, it was something else beforehand, there was a, a Humbats, but they switched over to a Loki. Now, possibly, Sio likes picking some crazy picks. Now, this is like the last game of the finals of like the big money tournament. And you're going for a, fair enough, it's a very risky pick. Now, Sio likes breaking the meta. Now, if you fight the meta as much as Sio does, sometimes it bites back. And... This is what we actually saw. It just, it didn't really become much use. Kind of felt like it got shut down a bit early. To be honest, didn't really have too much of an effect. Now, Cognitive capitalized on a few early advantages and then steamrolled through the rest of the game. Now, it was funny to actually see. Uh, but if you don't, obviously, in like SK's point of view, if you don't test the meta, it's not going to happen. But sometimes when it comes to them finals, you just have to kind of play and uh, really go for it. But from what I kind of gathered as well, there's a few kind of interesting things I noticed kind of watching through the tournament as well. SK seems to struggle mid-late games. If they don't get ahead at the early game, they seem to struggle. Especially against like Cognitive, that are very, like, are very balanced. They're like SK are really good at the start and they pile off right at the right at the the end game and they're just kind of they're all right but they're not quite there while the same uh cognitive gaming are kind of level all the way through they're they're good mid game good early game good this they're not fan well they are they're fantastic they're up there at the top they're the best but early game unless like like you say unless the sk can get ahead they seem to teeter off and then their late game doesn't seem to be that strong especially against someone like cognitive gaming Copenhagen Wolves are back. After Copenhagen Wolves originally disbanded, uh, we did have Spray on in that before. I can't actually remember the other the other team members of Copenhagen Wolves. Copenhagen Wolves have now signed up Expo Secrets, so that's great on them. I'm glad to actually see Copenhagen Wolves come back into the Smite scene after their first team disbanded. We haven't actually seen Root or Curse come back, so they're the first team to actually do a, a repeat performance after their team disbanded. So congratulations to them, all the players that kind of, they're earned their way there. And yeah, just good on you guys. Keep working hard. I'm sure you're going to get very far. So it turns out the new art direction was no coincidence. With the announcement of hi -Rez's partnership with Tencent, a Chinese publisher, also the owners of League of Legends, the one they've kind of like partnered with League, uh, Riot, they funneled them 400 million and did a load of kind of stuff with them. They're also account for 80% of the world's MOBA players as well. Well, what does this actually mean for Smite? Well, high res will be handling the distribution between North America and Europe. And Tencent, pretty much everywhere else. Okay? Everywhere else. Okay. This will also bring a lot of Asians into Smite, which, to be honest, there's so many of them. Just a small portion is enough to kind of keep the game going. Really. Kind of, if you think about it that way. And also... With the added skill level coming from them players, because they're pretty good, the skill ceiling of Smite's going to go pretty high. It's going to shake up the competitive scene. Fair enough, we're not going to see too much of that influence come across for a while, as their bait is only going to start in October. 
Uh, ours has already been. So they've got an, we've got another two months before they start. So there was no real NA coverage of the North Americans and the EU tournament this week. So just for people that actually have already seen the results, if you don't want to listen to spoilers, kind of stop for the next, like turn it off until I wave my hand and you won't actually see it. So first place for the NA, Team Dignitas. Second place, Cognitive Gaming. And third place, Vicious and Delicious. EU team. Actually, a new EU team kind of come out of nowhere. I haven't actually seen who the players are, so I actually have to do a little bit more research for that one. Is Imaginary Team. Uh, second place is Reason Gaming. And third place is Cracker Dons. You can come back now. We've all done. You can come back. Come back. We're all good. So, for we also had the, the free, Smite Tubes 3v3 tournament. Uh, really good watch if people don't actually watch it. It's uh, AEST. Uh, Wednesdays on SmartTube TV on Twitch. Okay, it's I'm there as well, casting pretty much every week. Um, very good team to watch. We the the results were Vicious Delicious first, Beefmaster second, and Guren uh, Guren Guren third. Now Beefmasters were pretty much unbeatable for the, like the last couple of weeks with a, a very strange combination. They would go Arachne. Possibly Sobek and Ra, or just pretty much like a, a tank kind of uh, on that. Just so they that they would run jungle Arachne with that early pluck and stuff like that. It's just a really dominating team early game. Kind of just stopped everybody like get into the late game to actually defeat them. Now it's obviously a really early game strong composition they were running. So vicious and delicious. Pretty much destroyed them when it comes to the finals, okay? It wasn't like last week, I don't know if Vicious and Delicious was in it, but when it comes to it, they actually knew how not to step, not to let away the few, few early kills that would let Beef Blasters run away with it, and then kind of just just held the game out long enough to just like destroy them. They would come out with Kronos and other like hard end carries in the end, just kind of blew them up. It's great to actually watch. So I hope everyone's actually enjoyed watching this. Obviously, it's the first one. They're always a bit rough. We kind of we'll work out the kinks. Obviously, work into what we need to show a little bit more. What we don't need to show. Iron out everything. Kind of should. Am I looking too much at the camera? Kind of work out like this. I want to do it as a, a week. Well, I want to do it weekly as it's a weekly show. But I want to put it out on a, a Monday, Tuesday at the latest, depending on the workload. Obviously, if I've got big events like this event and packs and stuff like that. I pretty much want to just give out as much information as possible and watch all the tournaments so you don't have to, but obviously you can still do if you want. And uh, yeah, give me some feedback, anything else you want to see. Obviously, hopefully we get this fixed. We're, we're, we're looking at a blue screen's pretty crap. Well, blue, it's green, but with a light in it shows blue. So that's kind of you can kind of see my problem where I'm at at the minute. So I hope you guys have actually enjoyed watching this. Uh, subscribe to the channel. This will be out every week. I do... Uh, Live game plays, uh, shoutcasts, pretty much a lot of weird things as well. Uh, I'm your host, Risty UK, James Christie, if anybody actually knows my real name. And uh, yeah, well, where can you find me? You can find me at youtube.com forward slash Risty UK. You can find me at Twitter at Risty UK. And then we've got twitch.tv forward slash Risty UK. So hit the like buttons, leave comments, give me feedback, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.